Howdy, um, I'm Pat Gunn, and this is a set of mostly off-the-cuff uh, observations on Robert Kennedy's um, complaints uh, against Google in court on the censorship of his um, ridiculous uh, takes on COVID vaccines. And uh, in that phrasing, you can get some of my opinions. Uh, basically, I have a lot of opinions on censorship and free speech, some of which you might agree with, some of which you won't. Um, I'm not going to hide many of my opinions from you, but uh, I will uh, just try and give uh, reasonable coverage of the issues as I understand them. I am not a lawyer. I try to understand law. I have an interest in law and jurisprudence and free speech issues um, and uh, of jurisprudence, things like that, um, public health, science. Um, and first I'll, I'll just lay out a few things uh, again. Uh, I'm not a lawyer. I have not studied law. I have not passed the bar. I really haven't made any serious effort towards doing any of these things. I have uh, informally studied law, and I'm sure any lawyers in the room will be doing a face palm here, except I'm not going to pretend that I have any deep legal expertise. If, if you're going to look for that, look somewhere else. Like, I'm, uh, I cannot authoritatively answer questions on American law. I do have law books. Uh, I have lawyers in my family. I've dated lawyers. Uh, I, uh, I, I do have a strong interest in jurisprudence, but uh, I probably have some fundamental misunderstandings of legal concepts. And because I have a sustained interest in the topic, I've tried to reduce these things. But as somebody who works in a discipline that also has a whole lot of pretenders uh, jumping in and getting their hands wet and often making funda fundamental mistakes. I understand that humility is really important when you work in a dis uh, or when you comment on disciplines that aren't your own. And so understand that I am not trying to pretend that I have deep knowledge on these topics uh, like a practitioner would. So uh, I, I'm trying to approach these topics with the usual humility of a non-practitioner and as somebody who appreciates expertise because I don't have the level of expertise of of a really the the people who you should be looking for for the most expertise are law professors uh, and law professors who are exercising mainstream views you're not looking for weird professors um, you're not looking for Dershowitz or some of the other like weirdos out there who just are taking weird views and running with them. You're looking for mainstream professors who are, t who are trying to explain things and uh, who are not trying to be weird. Um, uh, I am somebody who very strongly values free speech. I'm not quite an absolutist on it, but I am somebody who is really pretty gung-ho on it. I recognize that you can't adhere absolutely to it. There are some cases where you might, uh, you might have to, uh, you might have to bend from it. And when I t when I say free speech, I'm not talking only about the First Amendment concept of free speech. Uh, and when I say the First Amendment concept, I mean the government uh, restrictions on free speech. I, I think that it's useful to have a notion of free speech that's not just uh, government restrictions. I think it's useful to have a culture of free speech. And in academia, where I've worked a good part of my career, we have notions of academic, uh, open academic inquiry and free speech as academic culture. Um, we have in the United States, a, a certain notion of free speech that's much more substantive than just uh, the government won't censor uh, you. We, we have notions of open discourse and trying to have com rough conversations and try not to be offended and try not to uh, 
toss people out of your house if they say things you don't like, stuff like that. Um, and so I, I lump these things into free speech. You don't have to. You can draw your definitional line somewhere else. You can be much more narrow about what you're talking about when you say free speech. But I, I use the term more broadly. And when I use the term censorship, uh, I'm not talking just about government censorship. I, I think that it's useful to use the term to... Uh, I think private private censorship can be a thing. I don't think censorship is necessarily automatically a bad thing. Although I do, uh, my eyebrow raises a little bit. I, I tend to be nervous about censorship. Uh, I tend to be, I think it needs to be generally very strongly justified if you're going to do it. But in some cases it can be justified. It's much easier to justify when it's not government censorship, but I'm not uh, automatically, it's auto, uh, it has to be bad. It has, has to be something we're never ever going to do, but I think it has to be very strongly justified if we're going to do it. And it's much, it's easier to justify when it's not government censorship. Um, and I think Robert Kennedy's views on vaccines are rubbish. I think he's ill-informed on the topic. He's full of shit, and he's uh, and his views are uh, they do a lot of harm. And so, with with all this understood, I I, I think it's uh, I have skimmed his complaint. Uh, I brought it up on. Um, I, and I've, I'm not somebody who likes to just read the, the news commentary on a complaint and either be like, yeah, that's a great complaint or, or no, that's awful without even having read it. Um, I think it's important that you at least make some effort to read a, a legal complaint and give it a shot at convincing you or at least see what it says before you comment on it. Because, uh, Sometimes you, you find that when your, your first impression of something, particularly based on reports of what it says, they're going to be a little wrong. And sometimes you read a, a complaint and you're less certain than you were uh, before, you, uh, before you started. Or you find that parts of, of a complaint against one party are, uh, there's some points there and you maybe think like, hey, there's, there's a little bit here that's good and maybe there's a little bit here that's less good. Um, that's natural. It's, it's healthy. It's, it's good to get in the habit of digging for sources uh, if you think that you're up, to, uh, up for it and you do want to approach these things with a skeptical mind uh, and ideally you want to have some habit of trying to read these things. It's not, in my view, like trying to read scientific papers where, in, uh, again, in, in my view, I guess I shouldn't say again because I haven't commented on that yet in this video. In my view, if, if you're not working in the sciences and you haven't taken a research methods class, then you really have no, no business trying to read scientific papers. Just don't do it. Um, and I, I think I've already probably done a video on that before. Um, on YouTube? I, I think I have. Um, but just in brief, it's too easy to read a, a preprint or even something that's not even a preprint and be absolutely convinced without even having developed any of the necessary habits of, of properly evaluating a paper or a blog. And you'll just be convinced without any proper skepticism and, uh, and that's dumb. Like, just don't do that. It's stupid. Um, like, really, it, if you're going to approach it with that matter, then you really shouldn't even bother starting to read preprints or or blogs on scientific topics. Like, just don't do it. Um, but, but with legal matters, maybe it's better just not to do that either. But in, in any case, um, having skimmed Robert Kennedy's uh, legal complaint... The, the legal issues that he brings are, uh, it's, it's kind of a weak case. 
as far as far as I can tell. Um, so he there, there's really two points that he's trying to bring, one of which is entirely spurious. Uh, basically, it's it's a legal uh, it's it's imagining that the First Amendment says some things that it doesn't. Like it's imagining an, an amazingly broad and entirely or almost entirely unsupported view of the First Amendment that it regulates um, speech by private actors that are influential enough. And we might uh, we might even think that it would be nice if if our laws work that way. And I've actually ad, uh, advocated in, in some forums that maybe it would be nice if our laws worked that way. Maybe it would be good. Uh, the, the, the point basically is that when, or the idea here would be that when a forum becomes sufficiently influential that very large portions of public discussions on certain topics uh, for, for all of society happen in that forum, when a forum gets to be big enough, that, then it essentially becomes the public square. And when that happens, then uh, some, some obligations towards free speech should fall on the forum owner uh, and they, they get some government-like responsibilities um, towards free speech. And unfortunately, like that's not the way the, the First Amendment and our legal system works. And again, I, I think it might be nice if that were the way that our legal system works. Uh, like I'd, I'd be, I think it might be good to investigate reform along those lines. It would be difficult to do that, but it might be a better legal system to uh, imagine that might require constitutional reform. Maybe it would be possible without constitutional reform, although it might be a bit of a long shot, but uh, it's not the way our legal system works now, and you're not going to get there via a, lo a lawsuit, or at least it would be an extreme long shot. Uh, and so the, the argument that I think I'm seeing in Kennedy's lawsuit along those lines, it's exceedingly unlikely to be successful there. And I think it, it's a really fundamental misunderstanding of the First Amendment to make that kind of an argument. And I'm, I'm really makes me uncomfortable with uh, Robert Kennedy as a presidential candidate to be making such a fundamentally weird First Amendment argument. Like if you, if you don't get the First Amendment, uh, if you have such a bizarre argument to make, you really probably don't have any business being president. Um, like that, that's such a fundamental misunderstanding of such a fundamental legal concept that like uh, you really should get le learn how our legal system works. So yeah, it's, it's that's uh, that's really probably very unlikely to succeed. It's just such a bizarre, weird, long shot legal argument. Um, the second argument is also a long shot, but not such a long shot. And we've seen a little bit of back and forth on this topic more recently. Um, and that is the, the noting of uh, government engagement with some of these platforms, uh, some of these very large forum platforms uh, on things that they think that the platforms should, by their existing terms of service, consider censoring. Basically, when platforms like Twitter and YouTube and, and so on, when they, when they have a terms of service where they, they say, like, we're not going to allow um, uh, certain types of speech on our platform and they have existing channels uh, between uh, government actors and their policy teams that would allow them to flag certain content for rapid removal. 
is that something that runs afoul of government censorship or not? And that's kind of an undecided legal question in our system. And uh, so it's a little bit of a long shot to call that government censorship, particularly because it's still the platform doing it. Um, and we've seen a little bit of legal back and forth on that topic. Um, but but that's the, the second argument that Robert Kennedy's lawsuit alleges. Um, and I guess we'll, we'll we might there, there's a chance that uh, that the lawsuit might um, might be able to get a little bit of motion on, on that topic. But I guess the 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 question there, though, is that if it is forbidden under that topic, there's still the matter that the removed content is still still violates the terms of service for for YouTube. I mean, Robert Kennedy's content is still dangerous medical mi uh, misinformation. It still violates YouTube's terms of service, whether uh, whether uh, the whether there were government officials pointing it out or not. It still, uh, it still is something that YouTube wanted to take down, and still something that they would have uh, would have taken down if they had noticed it. Uh, all uh, all the um, all the finger pointing did presumably was somewhat speed up uh, that process. So it's uh, I. I think it's a little unlikely that Robert Kennedy's um, lawsuit is going to succeed. Uh, and certainly there's a, uh, there's a good argument to be made that, uh, I mean, these are policies where I even am comfortable with government censorship. There are certainly policies where I'm comfortable with private uh, sector censorship. Basically, dangerous medical mi uh, misinformation during a time of crisis uh, are they're, they're an area where I, I think uh, government censorship is justified for a lim uh, I mean, maybe even for a non-limited time, but certainly for a limited time, I, I think it makes sense. Like limiting access to uh, nonsense that's going to get people killed um, during a, a pandemic. Yeah, just just do it. Uh, you're you're gonna save lives. Um, uh, as as an example of something where you you end up having this uh, existing for a longer period of time, potentially an unlimited period of time, you end up having um, what's it called? Uh, I'm trying to remember the the name of that thing where you end up having people starving themselves because they have a screwed up body image. Um, oh. Uh, uh, fudge, what's it, what's it called? Um, pro, um, pro anorexia. Oh yeah, yeah. Pro Anna. There, there's a, a movement called the Pro Anna movement where you end up having weird communities that are supporting each other and starving themselves because of their delusions that they're overweight and you end up having like these weird bony ass people that are sharing images of themselves looking like skeletons and it, it's a bizarre shared psychological delusion and uh, it, it's it's weird weird stuff and they they share their health issues and they, they form these these online communities and uh, a lot of platforms are uh, they ban that kind of content uh, because uh, you you end up having people starve themselves into health issues and that's an area where I think uh, like I know it's not a it's not a time limited duration kind of thing but you also sometimes have platforms refusing to allow people to share uh, suicide information like uh, how, how uh, and th th those are just the kinds of things where potentially it's uh, it's potentially reasonable for platforms to censor dangerous uh, medical medical information, and I, I'm not going to get particularly grumpy over that kind of 
uh, that kind of limitation on free speech. Uh, I even for somebody who generally is pretty bullish on on free speech uh, rights, uh, it doesn't mean that I'm going to necessarily be keen to stomp out all platforms that make that go a different way on these topics. But I, I think it's fine for platforms to have uh, to have these kinds of limits. Um, anyhow, I, I, so just in summary, I think Robert Kennedy's, uh, his efforts are unlikely to succeed. I, I think his, uh, but one of his, one of his claims is somewhat more likely than the other to, to have a shot at, at succeeding. Basically the, when you end up having these kinds of fast track um, pointing out of um, terms of service violations between government officials. Uh, ba basically, you had these kind of tracks, uh, fast tracks, all the way back from, I think, uh, th these things have existed for a long time. I know that they existed, I think they existed in the Clinton, the, um, the Obama, the, uh, the Trump, and the and currently the Biden administration, they they've existed for the past many administrations, um, maybe the Clinton administration as well, probably. Um, but yeah, they've existed across uh, basically all past Democratic and Republican administrations, um, and certainly for all the the Trumpists who are uh, getting all grumpy about this, Trump's administration did all this stuff as well, but. Um, but yeah, they, uh, this is just, it's existed for a lot of past administrations. But it's still the, um, the companies that are, uh, that decide on their terms of service, whether they, um, whether uh, this kind of thing should be removed or not. And it's not really a coercive thing on behalf of the government. I, I guess in theory it could be, but, uh, uh, anyhow, that's that's the that's kind of the, the summary of my thoughts on on the topic. Uh, basically, uh, a nut job who's running for president has some very unlikely uh, things in his uh, in his complaint. Uh, one much more uh, one one much more likely than the other to to work, but neither of them is particularly likely to work. But I'm, I'm not a lawyer. Um, take what you will from it. Bye-bye.